hello welcome to ss unitech so say this side and today we are going to see one more real time ssis project so in this video we will also see the best practice that we should follow while designing the ssis package let's go to the another slide and we'll understand the requirement first so here the requirement is we want to load the data into the sql server tables from your excel files so this is the actual requirement so we have already discussed how we can load the data from excel file to the sql server tables so that is not a big deal here the catch is we have to handle this case so the case is if two users are executing the same package at the same time or the first user has executed the package and second user wants to execute the package in between then the second user should not be able to execute the package so this is the requirement so how we can implement this requirement we'll see below image so here first we are required to check whether the package is running or not so how we can check that so for that we should be having a table and that table will be keeping the information of ssis package executions so this should be having something like the package name then the start date and end date of the execution of the package here we will see first it is checking whether the data is available in this table or not for that particular package if data is there then we should be checking the end date if the end date is null it means the package is currently executing so on that scenario we can go and will reflect an error or we'll log that error in some of the file or we can send the email whatever is your business requirement you can implement if package is not executing then we can insert the data into this log table and we will be keeping the package name here and then the package start date and end date will be null so after your load will be completed which is loading the data from excel file to the sql server table then on the completion of this we will be going to update this end date so either this will be completed with success or failure your end date will be updating on this execute sql task so this is what we have to implement so for that we are required to have few of the store procedures let me go into the sql server management studio and we'll try to create those so here first we are creating the table so that table will be having total four columns first is the id as identity column then the package name start date and end date let me try to execute this query to create the table table is created successfully now first we are required to have one of the store procedure on that we will be checking whether package is executing or not so that we can see in the first level so here it is checking your package is running or not so we will be taking as an input parameter of the package name and after that will be reflecting as an output with yes or no if package is running then we will reflect as yes otherwise no so the same thing we can see here in this package it is taking as input parameter of package name and after that here it is checking on your table for that particular package if the end date is null so we can say that your package is executing so here we can see yes and at the same time we can see no if your package is not executing let me try to execute this and we can see your store procedure is created successfully now let me go into the visual studio and here first we have to use the execute sql task so that execute sql task will help us to check your current package is executing or not so we can drag and drop this now here let us come configure this so double click on that here we have to create the connection so let us try to create a connection so click on new connection here we have already created the connection with the database so we can utilize the same so as we can see this is the pointing current database so let us click on this ok now here the sql server type so we can see the source as an direct input and the sql statement so here we can specify the statement so this is your execute statement so let me try to copy this here we can specify the question mark because we are getting this parameter from the package so we can paste as it is and in the result set we will be getting only a single result set so we can specify as an single row in the parameter mapping we can add an parameter here 
and here we can see the package name so we should be having one of the system variable with the package name so this is your input parameter direction will be input data type we can select as an where care or n where care here we can see this parameter name so this should be your exact parameter name or we can specify as an zero here this is the parameter size so either we can specify the size or minus one we will take as n where care max in the result set we will be having a single result set so click on add here it will be returning only a single column so we can specify as an zero and this is the status so we have to create a new variable here and this variable will be saying as yes or no so we can wait here we can see the name so let us call this as status then here the value as a string and everything is okay click on okay now we can click on okay so this is checking whether your package is executing or not if your package is executing then it is checking inside your table and will get yes or no from there next we have to use another execute sql task and that execute sql task will be connecting with the first one so let us go in this precedence constant and in this precedence constant we can see the evaluation operation instead of constant we can go with the expression and the constraints so it will be executed with success and your variable which is the status this variable value should be equals to equals to as no we can evaluate this time this should be false as we can see let me click on okay again okay so we have configured the first checking of SSIS package execution and here it should be inserting the data into your log table. So for that again we are required to have one store procedure. So let me go into the SSMS as I have already written that SP let me explain how it will work. So here we can see it is taking two parameters. The first parameter will be the package name and second parameter will be your stage so stage is saying something starting and ending so here we can see the stage as yes so it is starting your package so here it will be inserting the data into this table as we can see it is having only two values for the package name and the start time now here we can see it is going to get the package name as an input parameter and the start time will be the your get date so it is like the current date and time if it is in case of the ending of your package like everything is completed your package is completed at the last we want to update the end date so here we can see the stays as e so this time it will be going to update your table like your end date will be the current date and here it is checking your package name should be the package name and the end time will be none so this is the sp let me try to execute this and it will create this sp now let me go into the ssis and here in this package let me double click on this here as we have already created the connection so we can use the same and here let me try to call this store procedure as starting so first parameter will be the package name and we'll get this from the pack package so that should be your question mark and second will be your s so that is starting let me copy this in the sql statement we can paste that again in the parameter mapping we have to create one parameter and this parameter will say for the package name so here we can see in the bottom side package name direction input is okay data type long so it should be having like anywhere care here we can see the parameter name so we can specify as an zero and here the size we can leave as it is why we are specifying zero because we can see inside the stroke procedure for the first input parameter will be zero for the second that will be one so second we have specified the hard coded value so that's why we are not required to add anything let me go again here and in the result set so here we are not getting any result set we are only inserting the data so we can click now what next we have to do 
next we have to use the data flow task so this data flow task will be loading the data into the table so we can drag and drop inside this package we can connect with the execute sql task and here double click on this and we can go here and we'll try to get the data from the excel source and after that loading the data into the sql server table so we can drag and drop the oladb destination let me double click on the excel source click on the new connection and we can browse so we can browse and we can select the file which is the asia underscore 2021 something like that click on ok here we can see the seat name which will be customer so we can select we can preview the data under this so it should be having the data now let me close this click on ok now we can connect this excel source with the oladb destination as we have already created the connection so we can see the oladb connection here here we have to select the table name so the table name which is the customer so we can select the customer details here go to the mapping so as we could see all mappings is succeeded now let me click on ok so everything looks ok till now the last part we want to execute the sql task again so this time it will be updating your end date so we can connect with this and instead of this success this should be on the completion either your load will be succeed with the failure or success this execute sql task 2 should be executed and this time this should be executed as end so we can copy this go to ssis double click on this here we have already made the connection so we can use the same query we can specify parameter we can go and try to add a new parameter so this parameter is for package name so we can select the package name here next we can see the data type so this should be the nvar care and here we can specify as an zero let me click on ok so we have successfully configured this but in case of the package is already executing we want to send the email so we can use the send mail task here if you want to log in some of the file then we can specify the log file here but i'm not going to do anything i'm just trying to connect with this script task and we'll show you let me double click on that so here instead of constant only it should be expression and constant and here remember like on the first go we were checking for the no here we are checking the yes if the package is already executing then we can go with this so we have successfully configured this let me quickly go here and here we can see this table and let me try to execute this so as of now we don't have any data here now let me go in the ssis package and try to execute it so once it will be executed we will see the data so as we can see this got executed successfully and here we will see the data in this so as of now end date everything is updated this is the package name start time end time everything is here i am just trying to update the end date so this is the end time as a null so it means this package is already executing somewhere so as we can see this time let me try to execute this package so what will be happening this time it will not go in the first way it will be go into the failure like the package is already running so that will be executing the script task so let me rerun this package so what will be happening it will be going to execute the execute sql task and this script task that you can see so here as i told you we can set up everything like the send mail task you can set up either you can set up some logging inside the txt file or the sql server table so whatever you want to do so this is the best way you have to design your package if your package could be executed by multiple users at the same time so i hope guys you have understand how you can design the package how you can execute everything i have explained here if you have still any doubt then you can comment your questions in the comment section i will try to respond there 